My name's Wendell, and I'm here to welcome you to the Storage Hoarders Support Group. Um, we're going to get through this by encouraging your hoarding addiction and just get to the other side of it. Let's just see where it takes us. Because you never know, you might be using the information stored in your array to help reconstruct society after the fall. Wait, what? Oh, what did he say? <laughs> It's 2023, and I want to survey the state of home server hardware. This is the reserver from Seed Studio. It's actually really a case for their embedded, I guess you'd call it, not really exactly, motherboard. This is a second or third generation motherboard from Seed Studio. This is the one with dual two and a half gigabit ethernet, a fast quad core processor from Intel, USB 3, USB 2, even has a full size PCIe uh, 3.0 by four slot dual M.2 internally plus M.2 for uh, the E key for uh, wireless cellular modem. We've even got wireless cellular antennas built in. You could use this thing as a router or a combination router and home server. The littlest forbidden server if you want as configured. I've got two 20 terabyte mechanical hard drives in here. So 40 terabytes of storage online or a mirrored 20 terabyte configuration if you want. I'm really sort of enamored with this form factor. It's, it's just about perfect. It's very quiet. 20 terabytes is nothing to sneeze at for a home media server and media transcode backup, something that mirrors to the cloud. Even if you're in the smallest studio apartment, this form factor would work really well in that scenario. But if you want something that's got a little bit more horsepower, you want something a little bigger. Well, I'm a little late to the party, but I've got the Johnsbow N1 NAS case. Now I'm gonna do a separate build with this system. This is an ITX case supports five three and a half inch hard drives. Do you know how hard it is to find an ITX motherboard in this day and age that has five uh, SATA ports? It's pretty rare. Most of them only have two these days. Don't worry, we'll solve that problem. Johnsbow actually made this a while ago. I'm just a little late to the party, but also these have been on sale for like $140 US, which is still kind of a lot for an ITX case. I mean, especially in the wake of something like the Fractal Node 304, which is six three and a half inch bays. But this actually has some nice creature comforts I'll cover in a minute that make it a more featureful case than that. But you know, the Node 304 was the undisputed champion of compact home servers for the better part of 10 years. So the N1, it's five three and a half inch bays plus one two and a half inch bay. It's designed for a 70 millimeter height cooler, a mini ITX motherboard, as I mentioned. It's 170 by 354 by 217, that's in millimeters, in terms of its dimensions. It can work on its side, but it'll also work in a tower configuration. son ever again. Uh, nah, nah. Whoever at Jonesbow had the idea to include the mini right angle power extension cord plus the little feet to raise it, genius move. Pure genius move. Because in a server configuration, what do you really need to connect to this? Power and network. And that's it. Does the manual tell us which screws need to come out to open it? It actually feels pretty premium. They've So I think of the tower configuration, I would reorient the fan so it's exhausting hot air at the top. That's just me. We'll do that experiment in the build video. But one of the big creature comforts with this case is this PCB at the back. This makes it a lot easier to hot swap drives, especially when you have a drive failure. That's the most annoying thing on pretty much every other case that works really well for a home server. And this is surprisingly low cost, given that that's an option. So this got me thinking about what would be the ideal home server case, like the ideal home form factor. Well, remember, I've done videos on the Sliger rack mount series. That's certainly an option. Even if you've got a short depth rack somewhere at home, that really would be a good option. I've been very happy with my Sliger cases. In fact, I'm still waiting on delivery of a couple of different configurations beyond the one that I've already reviewed 
ones that'll hold extra three and a half inch drives, but I haven't quite managed to get my hands on those yet. So looking at our Seed Studio option and our Jones Bow option, you know, these aren't necessarily inexpensive options. I got to thinking, you know, what would be my ideal home server chassis? Stay tuned for that Jones Bow build, you know, get subscribed, do the bell, whatever. I don't know. So I got this extruded aluminum frame. I did another video on that. You can check that video out. And I was thinking this might be useful for illustrating the perfect layout. First, micro ATX motherboard. This is the ASRock Rack X470D4U, and I've got a Scythe downdraft cooler on it. This is an AM4 motherboard. This has built-in VGA and remote management. It also has dual built-in gigabit. There's a version of this motherboard that has dual built-in 10 gigabit. This is not an inexpensive motherboard, but you can find these on sale occasionally for the 250-ish dollar mark, which is kind of a lot for an AM4 motherboard, but it's micro ATX, which means that we've got a lot of expansion slots two X16 slots, plus our X4 slot in the middle. Okay, it's X8, X4, X8. But hey, that's more connectivity than you get on a modern AM5 motherboard, right? You got four DDR4 DIMM slots. You can rock up to 128 gigabytes of memory in this platform. You've got a lot of options for connectivity. We got two front panel USB 3 ports, as well as two at the rear. You don't have to use a server motherboard like this. This one actually does work with error correcting memory. It doesn't actually log the errors to the IPMI, but it does report them to the Linux kernel. How do I know? I've got the Passmark DDR4 tester thingy. It's USB and it actually injects memory errors. Woo! You can write your own kernel module that will save the memory errors to the IPMI to sort of close the loop there. That's normally handled by a system module, but AMD only provides that for Epic CPUs. So that piece is missing. The system management bus doesn't do that, but you can do that in the Linux kernel and it's functionally basically the same. So what I would do for my perfect home server case is basically just scale up this, this design. We would have a chamber for the motherboard that's designed for half height expansion cards. Why half height? Well, I don't want a ton of wasted space in the case. So this third of the case is going to be for the motherboard. So keep that in your imagination as we go forward. On this side, we should have two banks of three five and a quarter inch bays, six five and a quarter inch bays in total really cheap to make a case that's just empty five and a quarter inch bays. And why empty five and a quarter inch bays? Enter IC Dock. I've done a lot of videos in the past for the different wacky options from IC Dock. Here is a thing that fits in a five and a quarter inch drive bay that will hold eight M.2 storage devices. Yeah, eight M.2. You could put 64 terabytes of M.2 flash in this if you had more money than cents. I do not yet have more money than cents, but I'm working on it. Just to give you an idea of the options. So IC Dock, and it's not just IC Dock. You can order all kinds of stuff from AliExpress that's cheaper and crappier, but uh, you know, just depending on what you wanna do, whatever your imagination will come up with, you can probably cobble together if you've got empty five and a quarter inch bays that are completely standard. So like if I wanted to have eight U.2 plus eight M.2, that's gonna take 16 PCI Express lanes times two just to get these connected into the system. So that's already, we're gonna need something with more PCIe lanes than we have in AM4. We're gonna need one of those little tiny, you know, Epic Roam motherboards or one of those little tiny Xeon motherboards. But here's 32 lanes of PCI Express connectivity in just three five and a quarter inch bays. And I had the vision for building that and I wanna make it hot swap and boom, we can totally do that by Legoing this thing together with stuff you can get from IC Dock. It's no problem at all. If you want something more pedestrian, like three and a half inch mechanical storage, these are like 50 bucks on eBay. So this is the spectrum of creativity you can do if you've got three and a half inch drive bays. And in this physical configuration, it doesn't take up a lot of room and there's not a lot of empty space, which is the problem that I have with a lot of physical cases that you might have doing this. I mean, when we did our CD-ROM server a long time ago for archiving your DVD collection, the best choice of case was the Antec 900 because the entire front of the case was five and a quarter inch bays. You do realize that case is over 10 years old at this point. And that's the best choice if you're gonna go crazy with five and a quarter inch drives? And the answer is yes. For this or for CD-ROMs, that case is still the best choice. And it's kind of big. It's not, not as attractive as these options. 
I really want to normalize having something like this as part of your living room or home theater setup. Having this instead of a Chromecast or a really long fiber optic HDMI cable or whatever you have in your living room in your central home theater to me makes a lot of sense. Your media is physically close to your main TV, but it could be streaming media to all the TVs in your house and your neighbor's houses and your friend's houses and everybody else's house. Thanks, Alan Malventano. No, I'm just kidding. Woo! So if you had something like this here, then you could have five hot swap three and a half inch mechanical hard drives. And then you would have room over here for U.2 or SATA or some other kind of hot swap. And you would have three five and a quarter inch bays in order to do that. Now you don't have to fully populate the system, they could just be empty drive bays. And your power supply would be down here somewhere. And this would be the perfect layout for your home server. The form factor ends up being really similar to the Seed Studio, but scaled up. And with five drives, you could rock a hundred terabytes of local storage, plus all of the local flash storage you could ever need. You could rock 16 cores in this configuration, either AM4 or AM5. And that should satisfy most of the home server needs for all but the most egregious abusers of home services among us. And for us, well, there's rack mount systems and we can totally just do a rack mount system. The thing that I really wish that we could do in the Seed Studio form factor is at least three, three and a half inch drives. And the reason for that is if you pick up two 20 terabyte mechanical hard drives, you lose half of your investment in drives for redundancy. If there were three bays, you only lose a third because any one of the three drives could die. So you'd have 40 terabytes of usable storage with 60 terabytes of raw storage. And that's probably a good balance of, you know, a drive failing and recovering and redundancy, that sort of thing. The next place I sort of want to live is five drives, which is where our Jones bow case will enter. Five three and a half inch drives, 20 terabytes, is 100 terabytes of usable space. Plus, we've got enough connectivity, we could have high-speed networking or other similar facilities. Because our expansion slot is available at the rear here. It is only a half-height expansion slot, but it is available for rear I.O. So if we wanted to have a 25 gigabit Ethernet card, or a breakout card to give us more M.2, or some other similar connectivity, that is an option with this case. The problem is that it's harder to find ITX motherboards that have more than four SATA ports. And really, this thing would rock six, because you could run you know, your two and a half inch SSD or two, you can just cram one in there, plus your mechanical storage for operating systems, plus whatever M.2 storage you have on board. So, you know, the build in the Jones bow is gonna be fun. And there are already a lot of other builds you can check out with the Jones bow in one online. And that, because there's so many other build videos that kind of took the wind out of my sails a little bit, like I wanna do it, I'm probably gonna run this at home for media consumption, because right now it's a virtual machine on a more powerful system. Maybe I could turn this into one system in a cluster. I'm not really sure. I just needed something that has a little bit more more horsepower than the Seed Studio system, which I might use here for a Steam Cache or something like that in the lab. I'm not, I'm not really sure, because right now our Steam Cache is running on our main video server, which is fine most of the time, except when I'm seeding a bunch of games onto a bunch of different systems at the same time, and then that sort of messes with the editing workflow. First world problems, I know, I know. And so thinking through this and doing that kind of thing, I just really wanted to vlog a little bit about my thoughts on the perfect home server. And really, micro ATX, because this, look, it's got eight SATA ports. Six here and two on the top. Eight. Eight SATA ports. And it, micro ATX really is not that much larger than ITX. And so this feature set in a micro ATX form factor with six five and a quarter inch bays, that doesn't exist anywhere. And it's really not a lot more complicated than extruded aluminum and or folded metal. So if we're building my fantasy case wish list thing, then maybe that's something we can do. Honestly, the tooling for some of those Sliger rack mount cases could probably be retooled very, very slightly, especially the 2U cases. Just have two 15 inch depth 2U cases back to back and boom, you've basically got what I've, uh, what I've outlined here and probably work fine. In all of these cases, I'm perfectly fine with the SFX or the SFXL, it's a longer version of this power supply. This is a 450 watt power supply and this is plenty of wattage, even when we're talking about something like this platform with 16 cores and 128 gigabytes of memory and some mechanical hard drives. 450 watts, totally fine. And EVGA is in it for the long haul, 24 seven operating time, this power supply, not an issue because guess what this has been doing since I think 
2019, 24-7 operation, not a problem. So yeah. I'm Wendell, this is level one. Let me know what ITX motherboard you'd like to see me test in a Jonesboro N1. And it does not have to be an enterprise grade motherboard with onboard remote management. Why? Because I got all the Pi KVM stuff. We can use the Pi KVM and do all the remote management we need, not through an add-in card, up to and including turning it on remotely. We don't have to have an enterprise grade motherboard. That said, if you see one, let me know. I am keeping my eyes peeled for an ITX AM5 motherboard that is enterprise grade. I'm working on getting both the Gigabyte and ASRock ITX AM5 motherboard. The Asus X670 is a little less interesting because it's an X670 ITX motherboard. And when it's X670, you've got the extra chipset chip and I'm probably gonna get flamed for this, but it doesn't make any logical sense that they did the, the chipset the way that they did. They put the extra AMD chipset chip on a riser to give you a single M.2. I, it doesn't, from the block diagram, it doesn't seem as if that chipset is providing any USB connectivity or anything else. It's consuming four PCI Express lanes from the first chipset to give you four PCI Express lanes for an M.2. And so they can call it X670? Why would they do that? It makes no sense. So probably not gonna get that motherboard, but I'm probably gonna pick up the ASRock and the Gigabyte motherboard for ITX and try them in here. And those are consumer boards. Those are not really designed for servers, but I think it'll work pretty well on this platform, especially when we're talking about the Ryzen 7900, no X, 7600, no X, 7800, no X. Those CPUs will work great in this platform. I already know it. But also those platforms have some limitations. Things like, well, the Nick's not even necessarily you know, you're lucky to get two and a half gig. Is it Intel or Realtek? Which would you rather have? I mean, Intel's got the 225, which maybe has been on the struggle bus with hardware bugs. Realtek's been up and coming, but maybe you'd like to have something higher in, 10 gigabit or even 25 gigabit. Can we use the M.2 to add expansion? Like, I don't want to use the PCIe slot for a storage controller. Can we add one of the M.2 storage controllers? Can we add one of the M.2 cards that gives you more network ports, which I've already reviewed. Yeah, you can, there's an M.2 cards out there that you just add to your system. And then boom, you've got one or two more network ports. You can have a 10 gigabit port or two, two and a half gig ports or a single two and a half gig port, whatever you want to do for your particular configuration. You can do that through an M.2. That's pretty exciting. So I've got a lot of options and a lot of hardware, which is why I want to hear from you. What do you want to see me build for the ultimate home server. I know the software stack for your contemplated home server is as unique as you are. It's a million snowflakes, but what I'm trying to do here is find the right balance of value, complexity, and ease of building this. I mean, yeah, the Seed Studio, it's a nice, sexy package. You're paying for the nice, sexy package. Maybe you could come out ahead if you try to DIY something with the Jones bow. I mean, it'll be faster and have more memory capability and you know, real, 128 gigabytes of memory in this form factor, 16 real cores. That is a lot more headroom than something like this. Most people don't need that much headroom, but it's, it's pretty cool if you can do something interesting with it. But I'm not worried about that for right now. I want to sort of thread the needle on value and storage and everything else, which means I'm not necessarily looking at those enterprise motherboards or enterprise storage. We're just using SATA hard drives here. It's not even SAS or anything like that. Maybe enterprise cast off SSDs, maybe that's an option. But those are just in like the two-ish terabyte range right now, so it's not super exciting. But I don't know, it's interesting. Engagement challenge, let me know below or on the forum what motherboards you're looking at that might make sense for this build or this home server use case, especially AM5, but I'll consider other platforms, even as far back as 10th generation Intel, that's maybe an option. And I know that there's some, some really competent ITX AM4 options as well. I've got a couple of those already, so maybe we'll try that, but I'm sort of more forward looking. But again, you know, 10th generation Intel, I mean, it's a home server. What do you really need? I don't know. I'm one of this level one. I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums. Mm -hmm.